Very good evening. You're watching Viewpoint with me, Afrida Rahman Ali. Well, 130 seats are up for grabs in southern India, and the stakes are very high for all the major political parties. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is engaged in massive mass contact programs where PM has held rallies across all the big states. He was addressing rallies in uh, Kerala earlier today, before that in Tamil Nadu. So this is the last ditch effort to turn the narrative in favor of the BJP-led NDA since much has been made about the North-South divide and how the South is not in favor of the NDA alliance. Interesting, in fact, is the, is the fact that all these five states that we are looking at, Karnataka, Kerala, uh, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, also, of course, Andhra Pradesh, each of these states have a very unique political landscape, very dissimilar to each other in that sense, where regional satraps are powerful, the regional parties are a formidable force. They are forces to reckon with. So all major parties, therefore, need their support, need them as part of the alliance to actually make an impact, to actually make inroads into these states. So we will uh, have an in-depth discussion on this issue of whether the regional satraps the regional players are more powerful at this point or whether the BJP-led NDA are trying to get hold of important allies just like the BJP did with PMK recently in Tamil Nadu, whether that effort is starting to show results. Who is ahead in this game? And how does the Congress hope to capitalize on its recent formidable win in Telangana? Will Andhra Pradesh follow suit? Something uh, that the Congress is hoping, of course, to capitalize on with the just concluded state elections where it had a, a big win in a state like yeah. Telangana and of course in Karnataka, the party is already in power. So these are two cash rich states that Congress has pinned its hopes on. And these are states with big numbers of seats as well. So let me open the discussion for debate with my panelists today. Joining me, Tavleen Singh, political analyst, R. Rangaraj, senior journalist from Chennai. I'm also hoping uh, to be joined by Madhavan Narayanan, senior journalist. Is Madhavan also with us? Yes. Hi, good evening. Good evening, uh, all of you. Good Thank evening. you for joining me here yes. on The Viewpoint. Good evening. So I think Hello. I'd like to begin uh, uh, with uh, you, Mr. Rangaraj, that at this point of time, Tamil Nadu is a very big state. It's a state that the BJP-led alliance has its eyes set on. AIA DMK decided to part ways. Was that a big setback for the NDA? Because the Prime Minister has made a strong poll pitch in his rallies in Tamil Nadu, both in Coimbatore and in Salim. Well, uh, you know, the, the South is really the, the weak spot for the BJP. If you look at the national footprint. So they've not been able to make much headway, uh, barring a uh, uh, Karnataka, where they've been in, in and out of power the last uh, 10 years or so. Uh, <clears throat> but otherwise, it's been a, a pretty downhill as far as they're concerned. So they're making a major bid to try and salvage as many seats as they can from the south. Uh, the two ways of looking at it. One is to reduce the strength that the India Alliance will have from the south kitty and hope that they can try to add a few seats of their own. Uh, yes. when it comes to the national picture. So that's a two-pronged strategy. Uh, and here, they have they have had to depend on allies. Elsewhere in the north, they're in a dominant position, and even the alliance partners are more or less uh, number two. Uh, but here in the south, the uh, regional party has called the shots. Uh, so they have to kind of uh, uh, be prepared uh, to accept the status of a junior partner, which is very difficult for them. But of course, they try to overcome that by protecting the national image of Modi at every meeting and hope that Modi dominates the uh, electioneering as far as they are concerned. So uh, as far as uh, Andhra is concerned, they have a good alliance now with TDP and Jansena, which is trying to cash in on the anti-incumbency factor that is working against uh, the YSR Congress. Uh, just like there was an anti-incumbency factor that worked against uh, uh, BRS and the Shekhar Rao in Telangana, where the Congress yes. actually upstaged and BJP was pu uh, pushed to a relatively poor third position. 
So that is as far as Andhra and Telangana are concerned. In Kerala, by and large, the 20 seats, uh, both the CPM and the Congress, even though they are contesting separately, uh, India Alliance partners, but uh, they feel that the, most of the 20 seats are up for grabs. There may be one or two seats where the BGP is trying hard, but they have a very big uh, um, challenge in trying to reach the 30-35% uh, mark if they have to uh, make an electoral victory. They may improve the poll percentage, uh, which they are doing in the last two, three elections, but they are not been able to cross the threshold mark of 35%. So that's a bit of a struggle for them in Kerala. In Tamil Nadu, of course, it's a different story, where the DMK yeah. almost made a clean sweep uh, in the last election. Uh, barring one seat, uh, it's a DMK uh, alliance is intact. Uh, in fact, they've been able to add Kamalasan to their uh, alliance now, Makkal Nidhi Mayam. Though they have not got a seat to contest, but Kamalasan has agreed to accept a Rajya Sabha seat, and he could campaign. Not only in Tamil Nadu, he may campaign for. In a bit because that itself is an interesting area to focus on. Madhavan, uh, you know, two points that I take from what uh, Mr. Rangaraj just said. One is how the BJP is very clearly, in, in no uncertain terms, trying to project Mr. Modi as their mascot, as the vote uh, catcher. Uh, is that going to work in the South? Uh, the Prime Minister's statements, if you have observed, even the ones uh, that he made earlier. In fact, I'll play out some of those uh, bites. I'd request my producer to give that bite uh, where he spoke about how uh, the India Alliance is against Hindu religion. So very clearly, the prime minister has gone out there, made a poll pitch, and made a pitch on communal lines as well. So A, on the issue of PM Modi and his image trying to make a last-ditch effort, so to speak, uh, in these southern states from with his rallies. Madhavan. You are on mute, I think. You'll have to unmute yourself, can't hear you. I think you are still on mute. No, unable to hear you. Let me put that question to uh, Tavleen and I'll just come back to you. Yes, Tavleen, uh, where do you stand on this? The India block is spinning its hopes, of course, on the big five states in the south. Uh, Prime Minister Modi, as we are looking at those pictures as well, is busy touring the sun, making a push. The, it's, yeah, it's see, Afrida, it's, it's, it's very clear that uh, somewhere or the other, there is a sense within the BJP and Narendra Modi knows that North is saturated when it comes to uh, the Bharatiya Janta Party. There is there are only states like Punjab and Himachal that are left. Otherwise, it's all saffron. So, and it's not that just before, uh, you know, just after the election dates were announced that, uh, you know, Modi is seen campaigning in South. If you've seen for the last, if I'm not wrong, over a year or maybe two years, there is a sense that uh, uh, Modi and his team have been, have been working and trying to focus on the south part of our country because now that the target that they have set is 100 seats more than what they got in 2019 so 130 131 seats come from the five states let's be very clear in andhra pradesh in tamil nadu in kerala bjp has not done anything in the sense that they have not ever have had their footprints also uh, as far as uh, you know ever since modi came to power is concerned so his full focus is on uh, on south Andhra, uh, sorry, Telangana and Karnataka. Karnataka is something that they are confident of even now. If you remember last time also, uh, they had a landslide kind of a victory in Karnataka for Lok Sabha elections. So these three states, and if you note, uh, Afrida, in the past, uh, whether it was before the, pran, uh, the Ram Mandir uh, inauguration, his temple run that many were calling it, were primarily in the south, but that's also because of from where the history also brings us. Uh, the you know the the connotations of the Padma Shri awards being given to a lot of South artists, uh, Sengal in Parliament. So he is paying a lot of attention to South and the South part of our country. But there are huge challenges. There are very very strong uh, state leaders. There, but but he's hoping that Chandra Babu Naidu, Naidu and Pawan Kalyan will help them in Andhra Pradesh. But Tamil Nadu is going to be a pill task. Uh, uh, the the language, the linguistic identity is very strong in, in the southern states, in the five states that we are talking about today. So that is a challenge. Remember, Bharatiya Janata Party and Modi is seen as someone who propagates only and only, uh, you know, Hindi language, Hindi identity. So it's known as a Hindi party. And that culturally is very difficult for, for 
uh, people in the south to accept. So that is one challenge that he's trying to fight. All the rallies that we've seen in the last couple of days, you've seen how he has been trying to uh, use yes. the language in fact, there in three states. Out, uh, Tavli, one of those uh, statements of the prime minister, and then I'll come to Madhavan. Uh, let's listen into what the prime minister said in Salim, in Coimbatore, and we will be very uh, easily we'll be able to sense the kind of pitch that the PM is making in the south. Let's listen. To it. He decided कर चुका है कि 19th April को एक एक वोट बीजेपी को जाएगा एनडीए को जाएगा अब तमिलनाडु ये डिसाइड कर चुका है अब की बार अब की बार चार सौ पार अब की बार चार सौ पार डेवलप भारत के लिए चार सौ पार डेवलप भारत के लिए चार सौ पार डेवलप तमिलनाडु के लिए चार सौ पार डेवलप तमिलनाडु के लिए मॉडर्न इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के लिए मॉडर्न इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के लिए थर्ड लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी के लिए थर्ड लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी के लिए चार सौ पार आत्मनिर्भर भारत के लिए आत्मनिर्भर भारत के लिए ओके सो माधवन आई एक्चुअली वॉन्टेड दैट पार्ट वेयर द प्राइम मिनिस्टर गॉट इमोशनल एंड ही अपेरेंटली रेफर टू फॉर्मर स्टेट बीजेपी प्रेसिडेंट लेट के एन लक्ष्मण एन ही ऑल्सो रेफर्ड टू ऑडिटर रमेश हु वॉज अपेरेंटली brutally yeah. murdered yeah. and uh, he made a very clear pitch saying that the india alliance is against hindu religion so yeah, you missed playing out that part but nevertheless please go no, ahead. i was watching it live actually with uh, mr modi was hmm. speaking so hmm. all i can say based on what the clip you said showed now and the speech i was watching then as well hmm. uh, it took a very colorful interpreter who actually went beyond the brief of what mr modi was saying <laughs> to add some what i would call was spice to actually make the speech look uh, sharp but mm. as you could see uh, uh, mr modi unlike in the hindi belt is very uncomfortable in uh, the south particularly in tamil nadu mm. because mm. the language he speaks is not he doesn't you know as it is it, neither english nor hindi works very well in tamil nadu and so mm. uh, you know if you look at the history of rss the, which is based on the themes of hindi hindu hindustan uh Mr Modi is trying to live down this whole image by his out, uh, outreach but you know as my previous panelists have pointed out there are various aspects to this uh, you know they stated uh, stated the facts well what i would like to do is to actually go beyond the obvious to see what is really different from the south apart from the language which we all know to be different uh, first is that the political awakening in the south whether you take devaraj arts in karnataka or you know the communists in kerala or the dravida movement in tamil nadu have historically challenged some of the known facets of hindutva through a combination of rationalism and uh, backward caste assertion and aspirations and therefore uh, the caste identity and the aspirational identity based on economic and social upward mobility is more important than anything else in the southern states uh you know if you take the lingayats of karnataka they have been heterodox not orthodox whereas modi's sanatana dharma appeal is more towards the orthodoxy of hindu hinduism this apart what mr modi is betting on are three things one is national pride based on the fact that geopolitically india is emerging stronger second yes. thing is cultural pride you know by awarding uh, the that is uh, you know um vajanti mala the uh, you know palki award or uh, you have padma shri and padma bhushan and of course the single thing that was in, installed in parliament there is a lot of cultural pride being invoked and first of all to address the main concern that the bjp does not go out of the way to the south today for instance he even invoked the goddess uh, mariamman which you will never find in the north so there is an attempt to be inclusive within the hindu pantheon and that is all but uh, interesting but 
this is the first real outing for mr modi in the south in terms of cultural outreach and going that extra mile to win votes and support so that brings us to the alliances which are very critical alliances are important because if you take uh, the fragmented polity of tamil nadu you have uh, you know uh, what the, the the main ruling party dmk as well as the main opposition aiid mk are not with the bjp and therefore bjp is trying to be the third force if you take uh, and and so uh, row of people lined up today and the crowd was very restive because they couldn't connect with mr modi and the row of uh, people sitting in, on the dais with mr modi were all belonging to relatively minor parties Uh, and typically in line with the national strategy you have the uh, the less uh, lower of the backward caste are being ruled ruled by mr modi and the bjp but we still do not know uh, which how what does it mean in terms of elections in a first past the post system there is no uh, you know meaningful track record yet so the broad guess as one of the panelists pointed out is they may increase the vote share but may not get to the seat share so right. uh, I, i hope you didn't disconnect uh, frida and you yeah, were listening yeah i disconnected for a bit sorry for that but i'm sure the audience that's uh, okay was so you, i can go state by state but broadly speaking if you look at telangana although mm -hmm. uh, in hindutva may be a factor in terms of the fact that hyderabad has its nizam nizamate and uh, the muslim dominance at the same time the predominantly telangana has backward caste more than the upper caste hindu in political force and to that extent modi has to contend with this ambitions of the obcs rather than the uh, emotional appeal of hindutva if you take andhra coastal andhra jagan reddy is very firmly entrenched with his welfareist polit politics that also goes towards secularism so he is trying to uh, you know who chandra babu naidu and uh, modi are sort of coming together what you would call a marriage of convenience what is the point you are making madhavan are you also saying yeah. what mr rangaraj said that bjp has an uphill task it no, is still not only uphill the big point i am trying to make is that the social fabric of the hindu society in the mm -hmm. south of india is so di different from the north that the yes. conventional yardsticks based on the consolidation against the minority muslims or invoking mogal rule those things don't appear That's in the south their cultural point. memory the cultural memory of the southern hindus is very different from very different. the kind of memory that, that they have how the dmk has been responding to the, uh, to uh, some of the statements that bjp makes it has been extremely uh, i would say uh, been rabid on the issue of sanatan dharma and uh, the congress tries to distance itself immediately but how will that work i mean on one hand it's that's a very interesting point you know yes. let me invoke a tamil let me invoke a tamil saying you know in tamil there's a proverb this that says that if you if it rains in kortalam in the southern of tamil nadu the southern part of tamil nadu uh, it uh, there is thunder in coimbatore in the north so mm -hmm. you can invoke that same proverb and appeal to uh, you know congress if it wants to win the south has to be closer to dmk <laughs> but if the dmk invokes its periyar yes. origins and the dalit consolidation and fight against upper caste domination and uh, you know superstition in the as it was seen by uh, ambedkarites in periyar then it loses right. its plot in the north so uh, you know it it's that's in an a, that's a situation that congress finds itself so, but, very often but uh, yeah. i want to mention one two things mm -hmm. one is that the dmk and the communists in kerala are both cadre based parties with very strong social connections that is right. making it different in fact i have a problem with your headline you said southern mm -hmm. satraps actually the people we have in the southern uh, states are not satraps who are part of the empire they are okay. actually fortresses that the empire wants to breach please understand these are southern fortresses that the northern southern empire quote and quote wants to breach so it's not a satrapy the satrapy exists in partly in bihar and maharashtra and uh, okay. you know uh, so i wanted to ask this question because i was reading a lot of uh, congress uh, you know inputs on a uh, reaction so to speak on prime minister modi's rally is mr rangaraj what the congress is saying is this that the bjp has no acceptability in the south because the bjp does not believe in plurality or diversity it believes in a certain one oneness 
one nation, one code, one nation, one poll, one nation, one language. And therefore, the BJP has no acceptability. The other thing that the Congress is saying is also that why is it that the prime minister will never contest from the south? Why is it? Because he knows that he does not have an acceptability. What prevents him from contesting Lok Sabha from the south? How do you react to that? Well, it's not just a question of contesting from the south. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been people from elsewhere in the country who have contested. For example, Indira Gandhi contested mm -hmm. when uh, she was uh, a Lok Sabha seat uh, uh, was lost and she had to seek uh, election to the Lok Sabha for some other constituency. And she mm -hmm. came down to Karnataka to uh, contest and come to the Lok Sabha. Mm -hmm. So, it, it's not just mere fact of contesting. Uh, I think basically it's a problem of a huge uh, ideological divide. So the, the more you harp on uh, uh, one nation, one language, etc., uh, it seems to have a backlash. Uh, right. You should understand that there's a lot of uh, regional pride, not just in Tamil Nadu. It's there in Andhra. Uh, it's there in Telangana. It's there in uh, uh, even Karnataka. And what the Congress has done in the last few years is uh, not just retaining the Nehru Gandhi legacy, which does have an impact in the South. Uh, mm -hmm. What they've added to that is by their association with various uh, regional parties, they've also gone local. So the more micro you get uh, and the more you expose the cause of uh, 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 regional factors, uh, for example, in uh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka too, uh, Sidharamaya and D.K. Shukumar played the local Kannada card. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. In Tamil Nadu, the leadership are, is strong, whether it's yes, Telangana are, or yes, Kannada. Telangana has yes. fared well in electoral politics. But yeah. So a, a certain amount of free hand was also given to Revendredi in Telangana. You see, Revendredi in Telangana was given a free hand to espouse the local, uh, local cause and local sentiments. Uh, so uh, what's happening is uh, in the south, there is uh, uh, a feeling that the these parties are closer to their mindset uh, rather than a party uh, uh, like the BJP, which is seen uh, more alien uh, when it comes to questions of federalism, inclusiveness, local mm -hmm. pride, the local language and local culture. Moody is trying is hard to... Also believe, uh, Madhavan, because unless you have strong so that's local that, leaders... So that's the way, uh, that's why... You see, Mamta Banerjee, where regional parties are doing well, uh, BJP is struggling to counter that. As a sample, Mamta yes, Banerjee in West Bengal. Okay, I'll come to you, Madhavan. Just one or minute. Or you I take uh, Thakare in uh, Maharashtra. Uh, Thakare in Maharashtra is playing the Shiv Sena, Maharashtra, Manus card. So these yes. are factors where the BJP is, is uh, mm -hmm. finding it tough to uh, beat back that challenge because of its excessive, uh, uh, excessive reliance on this uh, 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 muscular nationalism and jingoism and all that. So that seems in states where the regional parties are strong and they invoke the regional pride and local pride, uh, they, have they are doing better than uh, the BJP. So that's a lesson so to I be learned by various parties. Before I forget the issue, because since you raised this, uh, since we raised the point about how, uh, why is the PM not contesting from any state in the South, uh, Dublin is, isn't it very rich for Congress to say that? I mean, you have Rahul Gandhi making why not his home now after uh, having faced uh, defeat in Amethi, uh, now they are saying, okay, why isn't the prime minister contesting from the South? But the reality is that, well, I mean, we know whether their strongholds are. I can't hear you. Hello. I think Afrida is frozen. <laughs> Yeah, Afrida <coughs> is a drop. So, ये decide कर चुका है कि 19th April को एक एक vote BJP को जाएगा, NDA को जाएगा. अब तमिलनाडु ये डिसाइड कर चुका है अब की बार 
अब की बार चार सौ पार अब की बार चार सौ पार डेवलप भारत के लिए चार सौ पार डेवलप भारत के लिए चार सौ पार डेवलप तमिलनाडु के लिए चार सौ पार डेवलप तमिलनाडु के लिए मॉडर्न इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के लिए मॉडर्न इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के लिए थर्ड लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी के लिए थर्ड लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी के लिए चार सौ आत्मनिर्भर भारत के लिए आत्मनिर्भर भारत के लिए ओके सॉरी फॉर दैट आई थिंक आई एम फेसिंग अ बिट ऑफ डिस्ट्रक्शन द क्वेश्चन वाज फॉर यू no problem afrida we all face that all the time no so uh, so you know it's it's yeah it's rather rich when it comes from the congress party given their track record uh, ever since uh, narendra modi has come to power but as uh, mr madhavan said very clearly it's not uh, as easy as north seems to be that's not how south functions in fact i wanted to in fact add one more point uh, to what he was explaining in terms of cultural identity if you remember uh just when bharat nyay jodo yatra ended the shakti controversy has picked up and why pm modi was the first one to latch on to it is because of the meaning of shakti and how important it is to uh, to the south and i'm not saying i'm i'm a uh, i'm from the north i'm married into a family uh, which is uh, from the south in fact from karnataka so so you know that divide that they talk about and the understanding of subjects in terms of uh, political uh understanding and the cultural identity is very very distinct it's 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 not as easy as it looks but as far as congress is concerned congress knows that telangana is one stronghold they know that karnataka is right now with them but they are also aware of the fact that when it comes to general elections when it comes to lok sabha elections somewhere or the other there is a sense to go uh, with the, with the party uh, with the bjp i am not talking about tamil nadu or andhra pradesh or kerala for, uh, currently uh, but if you if you analyze his speeches um, modi speeches in the last couple of days he has also uh, you know paid a lot of attention to uh, you know the the industrial sectors that are in the south uh, the 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 it hubs that are in the south he's talked about fishermen of tamil nadu he's talked about uh, global uh, you know uh, uh, friendship with uae when he comes to kerala so he's trying to build a narrative that how the the government as a whole is helping all these states without making much noise about it and that's why right. he's campaigning the way he is now okay yeah. i'm having a bit of a disruption i'll quickly take concluding remarks yes madam i think i want to emphasize a bit uh, frida on the development plan that mr modi uh, speaks about which actually kind of rings hollow in the south because a lot of the good things that have happened whether it is the i i gulf boom in kerala or the it boom in karnataka or the industrial boom in tamil nadu or the human development indices are far ahead of mr modi's home state of gujarat including industrialization if you go to the south these days you will find the people from bihar and odisha are all were doing blue collar work uh, the industrial level whereas education levels have gone up and there are people talking about america and singapore and uh, you know, go to andhra you go to telangana this is the story so mr right. modi's appeal is sort of limited on development plan even in on infrastructure he's trying hard is the only thing that we can say is betting on alliances and cultural pride and his own personality and some of the cadre work to do the magic but you know but uh, it, it is a terrain that is very very different you know he in a metaphorical sense he comes from the gangetic plain but the southern uh, lands are a plateau so in more sense than one mr modi will be plateauing there okay uh, i want to ask about this contest which of course will draw a lot of attention to mr rangaraj uh, between sashi tharoor and rajiv chandrashekar it's a very carefully thought out a uh, candidate that the bjp has put against mr tharoor do you think mr tharoor can outshine uh, rajiv chandrashekar in tamil in, in uh, tiruvananthapuram in kerala well uh, <clears throat> shashi tharoor is a uh, i mean apart from this, the the complex uh, english phrases which he throws at all of us and makes people uh, scurry to look at dictionaries and uh, uh what not but he has his own uh, way of being popular uh which is which is beyond uh, beyond the congress vote bank so he is able to uh, reach out to the uh, middle class even the affluent sections and 
other sections of the people. So, uh, but the BJP, for them, Tirunandapuram is possibly the only seat where they have a real chance of trying to score a victory because of their uh, work and because of various factors in Tirunandapuram for the last 10 years. So, Sashi Tharoor has to battle uh, very hard to overcome the uh, the BJP in Tirunandapuram. And uh, we also have the left front. There so, we also... As well, because yes, the well, today comes... Sashi Tharoor has said... Uh, the more left front is trying to uh, work and trying to cut into his votes, and uh, 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 the implication is whether they are, uh, the the uh, hype in the left front, whether it will cut into Sashitaru's votes and may indirectly help the BJP. So these are all factors that may come up in the campaign over the over the uh, over the next fortnight or so. So mm -hmm. there are lots of uh, twists and turns here with both mm -hmm. the, uh, the Congress and left. They, they actually view each other with suspicion, even though they are part of the India alliance. But still, despite all that, the BJP is not able, able to triumph because they are on a very low base. Their base is just about 10%, 12%. So, as I uh, you have to reach the 30-35% margin at least if you have to overcome. Actually, in the last election. The same problem in Telangana. The same problem in Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu also, yes. They may so increase their votes. They are not making big progress. So it cannot be taken lightly. I want to so ask. That may take another, uh, it may take another 40, 30, 40 years. Uh, yes. <laughs> the way the progress is going on. Uh, given the 1%, 2% increase in every election. So that is not going to suit Modi. But the no, no, real problem for Modi in the South is he has not been able to. Uh, just one minute. State election. From 7% they've gone up to 14%. It's true that Congress had a decisive victory. But since we were talking about BJP's vote share, let's not undermine the fact that it's slowly creeping up, crawling up. Tavlin, about the about the star candidates, if we look at the film superstars, you have Kamal Hassan, we heard Mr. Rangaraj say, likely to support India Bloc. Uh, and you have Rajni Kant, we don't know uh, his political loyalties yet, but seems to be right-leaning. There was news about uh, Vijay Satpati uh, making the statement saying we should have educated leaders, don't vote for parties that seek votes on religion. Do you think that these, uh, you know, superstars, big names in South uh, film industry will have an impact in the voting preference and pattern? Now I lost the lead. <laughs> Madhavan, why don't you take that and we conclude yeah, the show? I I think it's important to remember that fan clubs play an important role in the South because they're almost like communities in many ways and mm -hmm. alliances do help to some extent. But I think uh, none of this is enough. About the superstars, about, the, about Tamil yeah. superstars, Southern the, film stars who are showing their political allegiance one way yeah, or the other. What let kind us of study. impact do they have? Yeah, let us understand the demographic here. Whether we mm -hmm. like it or not, Kamala Hassan and... Uh, Rajni Kant are close to 70 or above 70 in the case of Rajni, I think. So there is a age factor. The younger heroes are like Vijay and Ajit are all in the, the in Tamil Nadu. So they have their own fan base and none of them is playing ball with any party as yet. You know, although Vijay is uh, sort of secular in outlook, but so they are preparing for a future in politics, whereas Rajni Kant and Kamal are almost like has been. So there is a certain grassroots level campaigning work that can be done by the fan clubs, but let's not bet too much on it. Uh, let's face it, the even the so-called invincible Rajni Khan quietly bowed out of politics because he knew that the pitch wasn't suited for him. Right. On that note, thank you so much, uh, Madhavan and Mr. Rangaraj. Thank you, Tavleen, for joining us as well. It was a really interesting conversation and I would like to thank all of you for enlightening us with the sort of perspective that you gave us today. It is, as I said, going to be a fascinating battle in all these five big states and no chances are being taken by the ruling BJP. The Congress also, of course, are pinning its hopes on, on India's South because the North, as one of the panelists uh, said earlier, is saturated. Most parts are dominated by the Saffron Party. So we'll have to then see how this contest goes from here. Elections are really close. We'll keep all our viewers updated with the latest opinions and perspectives on viewpoint here on free press journal thanks for watching